Evening guys, welcome back to Fox Speed Shop. Tim here. Um, we're going to uh, follow on from last week's little episode on the uh, generator and uh, we're going to follow it up with a little bit of a look at the voltage regulator. Um, now as I said in a previous video, I had ordered in a solid state voltage regulator uh, and what I'm intending to do is to swap out the internals of the uh, the older um, mechanical regulator, replace it with the solid state one and have it so it actually sits in the engine bay and looks relatively uh, relatively original because you'll see in a moment that the two parts do look uh, slightly different. Okay, so first of all, um, this is the solid state voltage regulator that I have um, just bought in. Um, as I said in the previous video, I was changing the brushes in the dynamo in the hope that it would solve the charging problem. It didn't, um, but that's mainly down to an issue, I think, with this mechanical regulator here. Um, now this is the first time I've had it properly off the car, so I maybe should have started with my, uh, my investigations here. Um, so again, if, if you're new to uh, some of these older cars, uh, what you have is a voltage regulator that sits in between the field coil and the dynamo output. And it has three effectively electromagnetic coils inside it. This one here is a cutout. Basically what that's designed to do is to prevent uh, your battery discharging to earth through the dynamo. So it opens up like that when the, uh, when the dynamo speed gets too low. Uh, keeps the charge in your battery, prevents it from uh, discharging. This one here is the actual voltage regulator, so that flickers on and off da -da 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 like that to control the uh, the voltage coming out of the uh, the dynamo and going into the battery, so as not to cause overcharging. And this one here is the current regulator, which runs to the field coil. Now this is the one that I'll try and show on camera in a moment, is uh, a little bit iffy, um, and is. I think preventing the field coil from energizing so it's actually preventing the uh, the dynamo from actually producing any uh, any voltage now you can see these are made up of points rather than rather like you'd have in your uh, distributor the points however on this one if i pry that down are completely and utterly burnt so the current regulator is very burnt out. Let's try and zoom that in there, try and focus that. Um, and so that's that's actually not going to be working. Now I could possibly clean that up. However, I'll keep this on the bench and I'll do a bit of repair on that later. Uh, the other points all seem to be okay, the voltage regulator one. Um, I couldn't really see that very clearly in the car. I may well have got away with uh, cleaning that up. But as I have a solid state version of this, and for those of you who are um, not particularly au fait with electronic terminology, all a solid state um, is doing is using transistors to replace the role of these um, mechanical regulators here. So there's no user serviceable parts in this, but it's probably about half the price of a brand new one of those. Uh, so I'll keep that on the shelf and make sure that um, it's repaired for use again in the future. So what we're going to try and do today is we're going to try and actually uh, get this cover here, this cover plate, to sit nicely onto here with a little bit of modification, uh, a little bit of cut and shut if you like, so that I can then mount this in the car and have it look vaguely um, like the original one does without butchering the base plate here, which is what I would have done if this thing had been absolutely irreparable. So I've measured it up, I've got some clearance issues here and here and there and what I'm going to do is just give that a little slice out with an angle grinder and we should be able to get that to fit over the base plate. Now due to the nature of this part, not having the user serviceable parts within, what matters is, or what doesn't matter, I should say, is that I'm potentially going to be unable to remove this cap. It's literally just there for looks, and it has some nice uh, 
labeled terminals on there. I'll probably paint this black, leave a little bit because it's got to have an earth connection, uh, but I can spray it black um, up to there and just uh, scuff that off a little bit. But you can see I've got terminals on there. What I'll do is I'll drill these holes and I'll put the original screws back in. And when that's mounted into the car, it should be relatively indistinguishable from the original part. And then we'll give it a quick test and actually see whether or not uh, we get any power. Um, I'll show you a crafty little way of doing that without running the engine as well. And there we have it. Quickly blown over with a bit of black. Um, left some earthing points down there to replicate where the, uh, the earthing points would go there. And what we'll do is we'll put it in the car, we'll wire it up and we'll see if it works. Okay, so here we are back wired up again um, from a distance. Looks pretty much same as standard. And uh, we're wired back up at the dynamo. Um, it was a bit late to run the engine, a bit dark here, a bit noisy. Uh, so I decided to run it with a drill on the end there. Um, and we managed to get around about 12 volts. So I think we can safely say, although I don't have it on video, that we have fixed this problem. Well, again, that was a little bit of a short one, but relatively successful. Um, so once again, thanks for tuning in. And if you've enjoyed some of the stuff uh, we've been putting out, then feel free to like, feel free to subscribe or leave me any comments. Thank you. Good night. So just like any good Marvel movie, there is a post credit sequence. Uh, it's now the next day we've fired up the engine and as you can see, we now have a generator light that has gone off. So we have charging.